So it's the end of May 2023. Have you done the RF exposure evaluation for your ham radio station? For many of us, it can take less than 10 minutes. Let's take a look. Hi, and welcome to the Gadget Talk channel, where we do reviews and how-tos on a variety of electronic gadgets that catch my eye. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to meet the requirement of conducting a radio frequency exposure evaluation for your ham shack. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. I really appreciate it. Let's start by defining a couple of terms that are important to the evaluation process. If you're a licensed ham, you already have heard these terms, so this is just a reminder. The first is MPE. This stands for Maximum Permissible Exposure. As you remember, this is the maximum amount of RF radiation that's allowed. There's a lot more to this, of course, but we'll keep it simple here. The next two terms are related. They are controlled and uncontrolled exposure. The limit for each of these categories is different. Basically, what is controlled or uncontrolled is the area around where your antenna is transmitting. A controlled area is an area where you have some control over the ground and you can limit or instruct persons regarding proximity to the antenna. This, of course, includes yourself. Uncontrolled space is the area where you do not control access to others. This could include your neighbor's backyard or other public space near your antenna or a neighboring apartment if you live in a multi-family dwelling of some type. The last term I'll mention is mode duty cycle. Here we'll use duty cycle to help compute the average output power. Different modes have different duty cycles. For example, a single sideband transmission with no speech processing is about 20% on average. The FM voice and HF digital modes have 100% duty cycles. As we'll see in a minute, the main point to this evaluation is to determine the distance from your antenna that represents a distance or the RF exposure falls below the maximum permissible exposure. If you have that amount of distance or more, your station passes the test. If not, you'll need to make some adjustments. Adjustments are beyond the scope of the topic today, but there are good resources available online. Speaking of online, much of what we'll be looking at here is available on the ARRL's website. I encourage you to start there. Again, as you'll see in a minute, the ARRL resources will allow you to complete your station eval in just minutes at least for most of us. I'll leave a link to the appropriate page on the ARRL website below, or just search ARRL Exposure Calculator on Google or Bain. Now, before someone comments or asks, there is a formula to determine whether your station requires an evaluation at all. In my opinion, the formula is more time consuming than the evaluation techniques. It's also helpful to understand what the safety numbers are at your station. So regardless, do the evaluation. If you're like me, you'll be surprised at the rate at which RF danger decreases as you move away from the antenna. There are a couple of ways you can do your station evaluation. Let's look at two. The first and easiest is to use table four listed under the heading tables based on antenna gain on the ARRL station evaluation page. In this table, you simply find the frequency and antenna gain figure at or higher than your antenna and the power level 
you intend to use. There you'll see the controlled and uncontrolled distance at which MPE falls below the danger limit. If you print out the table and simply use a highlighter to mark the distances for each of the bands and power levels you use, if the closest anyone can get to your antenna is greater than this number, your station passed and you're done. File the page away with your other radio documents and you're good to go. If you're not sure about your antenna's gain, there's a handy chart on the Exposure Calc Instructions page that lists a variety of typical antenna gain figures. The second way to complete the station evaluation is to use the RF Exposure Calculator. The web-based calculator uses many of the same variables as the table technique. This calculator becomes more accurate in that it includes a duty cycle variable and an entry for power at the antenna. That entry allows you to reduce power at the antenna based on coax loss. There's a handy link to a loss calculator on the RF Calc instructions page near the top in the power at the antenna paragraph. This becomes important if you determine that the station fails the test when just using the power level specified for the radio. For example, your 100 watt output depending on the coax type and length might be a few watts less than that selected at the radio. That lower output might be enough to pass the test. Let's take a quick look at how the coax loss calculator works before working through the ARRL's exposure calculator. As you can see in this screenshot, I've selected RG8X coax and a run of 50 feet. I've chosen 14 megahertz with an SW of R of 1.5 to 1. With 100 watts of power from the transmitter, you can see the results in dB with 87.433 watts at the antenna. We can use the 87 watt number in the exposure calculator. Hey, just a quick break to let you know that you can support the Gadget Talk channel by using Buy Me A Coffee. It's a crowdsourcing platform where viewers can make a one-time donation or become a member of the Gadget Talk community. Your support helps provide resources to purchase some of the items reviewed on the channel. I'll put a link in the description below the video. Now, back to our topic. Okay, so with all our variables identified, let's run the ARRL exposure calculator for the bands we intend to use to determine the minimum safe distances and whether our station passes the test. Here are the entries I placed into the calculator. First, I used the 87.5 watt figure we got from the coax loss calculator. I then picked a 100% duty cycle mode for a worst case computation. I used a minute on and a minute off selection to simulate FT8. Again, a worst case scenario. I used a 2.15 dB gain from the antenna table for a half-wave dipole and entered the frequency for 20 meter FT8. When I pressed the calculate button, I got these listed results. The important numbers are 1.86 feet for controlled exposure and 4.16 feet for uncontrolled exposure. Since my antenna is higher than the, either of those two numbers, I'm good to go at 20 meters. When you press the print results button, you get this output. Save it with adding 20 meters to the file name. I ran the calculator on each band I operate on and saved it to my folder on my computer. The station passed and I'm compliant with the new rule. Obviously, for many of us, the exact power levels and duty cycle isn't going to matter. If your station passes the test using the table method, you're good. If you fail or if you're close 
the calculator's more exacting computation may make the difference between passing and failing, or at least give you a better idea of the increased distance you may have to provide to ensure folks fall below the maximum permissible exposure limit. For me, I found the whole evaluation exercise informative and fun. I'm not a big antenna guy, so I learned more about this topic and I'm confident that my station is running as it should, at least in terms of RF exposure. Oh, and by the way, mobile and handheld radios are exempt from the assessment. Join me over here for another video from my ham radio playlist and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon for the Gadget Talk channel. 73 and thanks for watching.